Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. It's another beautiful day here on the farm and it actually cooled down dramatically, especially here in the Midwest, Southwest Missouri area. It is currently 65 degrees out here this morning. It's beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and start off the morning by picking tomatoes and I'm waiting on the crew to get here. I'm gonna go ahead and get the boxes and pallets ready for them to get here and uh, start picking. So as you guys heard in my last videos, if you guys watched my grading tomato videos, you guys know that high tunnel number one came off strong this year. I believe we have already picked around 8,000 pounds out of the first one. And out of the second high tunnel in here, uh, the story is, or what I did in this one, is whenever those in high tunnel number one were growing nicely, I uh, went ahead and started a bunch of seeds, but I started them a lot later. And uh, April 1st was around the corner, and I, the, the, the tomato transplants are already. So then I went to our local produce auction and bought uh, red deuce tomato seedlings, the transplants, and I planted them in here. And now that we're harvesting, I'm 100% convinced that the tags are wrong or that someone mixed up the tomato transplants or something. And these tomatoes in here, I don't think they're red deuce. And the reason is, there's a lot, I mean, to me, there's a lot of uh, obvious reasons. I've been irrigating both tunnels the same. And in here, they are cracking like crazy. I just quit irrigating about a week and a half ago because I just got tired of seeing so many cracked tomatoes. And in there, I've still been irrigating them and they haven't been cracking as much or they haven't been crack cracking at all because Red Deuce, they're a cracked tolerant tomato. <clears throat> so first of all, it's the, um, the water, I mean the cracking from too much water and then the, uh, the plant size is really, I mean there are small tomato plants in here. They're not as vigorous and I've actually been feeding these guys quite a bit more fertilizer than I usually do than in there so overall I mean I I mean you just never know different year and stuff but I still believe that these aren't red deuce in here they still might be but you know maybe it's just my fault of growing them but you, you never know and this is what's happening right here on most of these you know they're small smaller tomatoes especially on this row right here and they're really getting that you know that that uh that shoulder there the green and uh, shoulder there and i've been feeding these guys a lot of high potassium fertilizer and the weeds have been growing crazy in here so so far this year this high tunnel hasn't been uh doing really well so the goal was so that you know we will be in full production on this one and we've been picking probably five or six hundred pounds out of this one every week but it's just not at the level we ex i wanted and expected this year so you know it is what it is you live and learn from now on now i will never buy any uh tomato starts at all i'm going to try to grow myself put them on a set calendar to go ahead and get them all started and uh, just live and learn and learn every day and as you guys can see here my trellising in here has been uh, falling apart and i'm going to probably make a whole video on what i did wrong this year but i used a bunch of wood stakes in instead of t-post because we didn't have enough t-post and the reason they're they're breaking off is that the the soil level or where, where the irrigation line is or the drip line is it's really moist and the, the soil in the, the, the air temperature, I can't even speak this morning. The air temperature in the high tunnel is really dry. So then the hot and dry, the condensation is rotting out the post there at the, um, at the ground level and they're falling apart. And I'll show you guys right here. They're just falling over. Just see right here. This whole tomato row here is falling over. It's all cracked here. So yep, that, that's fun whenever you go through and pick and you don't see the tomato so it's just it's just a tomato mess in here yeah I was now hopefully next year I'll uh, I'll do things a little different so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything ready for them when they come out here and uh, start picking but I'm gonna go ahead and head out into the orchard and show you guys our gala apples are almost ready to be harvested so now this time of year it's a really beautiful time out here in the orchard I've been coming out here pretty much weekly and inspecting the trees looking at the crop and like i said we haven't had much rain all summer long so the apple size this year will be a little smaller than usual because they haven't really developed unless we get a lot more rain in the next two weeks and it'll really size up nicely and peaches are different than apples peaches will stay small until about three about a month before harvest and they're going to really size up apples is just a um a slow growing process all summer long but overall, these, they're, they're, I mean, there's still pretty, some pretty good sized apples out here still, but they still have another about two to three weeks out here until they'll <clears throat> get fully ripe. And, you know, gala season in our area, or these are galas, and we have the Jonathan's on that side. 
these are arrived about the last week of August, depending on the, the year and you know how early they bloomed and stuff. But as you can see here, the apples are absolutely loaded this year. They are just beautiful, nice growing apples. I mean, we probably should come through and thin these, but we do a lot of you pick. I mean, all these are going to be probably you pick, and most some of them will be sold at farmers market. But there's there's no way we can sell this many at farmers market. So we'll do these on the you pick and. Um, you know our customers like you know you could get a nice big honking apple and very few customers like that but a lot of our customers have families and kids so they like a smaller apple so overall these apples are just looking amazing on this tree and i've been coming out here inspecting for uh, any uh rot issues our orchard has a history of brown rot because the previous owner who had it before us he really didn't take care of it as much as uh, he should have so we're trying to stay on top of things and trying to stay on top of the the san jose scale and uh if you guys are interested in knowing more about that let me know because I, I can make a full video on all that stuff but it gets kind of boring and complicated so right here as you guys can see here this is a royal uh these are uh grand gala we got two varieties out here with gala royal gala and grand gala the grand galas are probably 10 days earlier so there's some nice coloring on that fruit there and this will probably be ready next week. I mean, we wait until the ground color turns yellow on the bottom there. So some of these will probably be ready in a week, week and a half. So apple harvest is just right around the corner, the first varieties. So these grand galas will size up really big and nice. And these are on uh, M26 rootstock, I believe. So the apples are, are growing nicely overall. Then on this side, we have the um, Jonathan's. We got three or four different varieties of Jonathan's out here, but the Jonathan's are, are generally more of a medium sized apple and they're a completely red apple all the way through. So they still got some time on them. So, yep, yep, yep. I just, sometimes we get so busy working on the farm that we forget to uh, come out here and look how beautiful it is and walk through the orchard making sure everything's good to go. Cause one thing like on the strawberries and any other fruit we grow here on the farm, you know they say an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure so we always like to come through and uh, if we see a some slight issue we come through and fix it instead of trying to fix a problem whenever it's in full you know whenever the problem is too big to control so i just looked around and these are probably the biggest apples here these are the grand galas and uh probably go to, go ahead and try one of these harvest them and uh beautiful apples i mean just absolutely gorgeous and beautiful nice large apple number one here i'm gonna do the old time uh farmer's sake here and these i mean we've got a lot of rain and i haven't sprayed yet because there hasn't been much issue but we got to be careful with our early varieties to not spray a fungicide that has a long residual and has a long pre-harvest interval and these don't we always make sure to to keep on keep on top of these so let's go ahead and give this a try here wow good fresh apple crunchy delicious so uh mm. could be a little sweeter the longer you let it, let it sit on the tree the sweeter it's gonna get but not too bad wow good stuff mm. so i'm gonna go ahead and finish off this apple and i just want to show you guys the uh how the apple crop is looking this year and i'll make more videos whenever we start harvesting and how the crop is looking like i said on these grand galas you know some of them are even ready now and one way you could tell when apples are ready is uh let me try to find them. yeah is you want to crack open the seed there and if the seeds are completely black or really dark brown in there then the apples are ready to go but as you guys can see here there is a little bit of a um white still on the seeds so like i said another couple weeks on this apple and it would have been 100 percent ripe but you know you can still pick them a tad bit earlier like they do in the grocery store and they still taste decent but they're not going to have the the sugar content as they originally should so this is a decent apple i mean it's it's early it's two weeks earlier than usual it's good tasting it's still you know someone will still eat this and say it's a good apple but whenever you're selling a farm fresh apple, you want the bricks level to be at, at max capacity, the sugar content to be as as at, to the max potential as possible. So watch for those seeds inside those uh, apples there, and then you will, can tell when your apples are ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this apple here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. 
So this is going to be pretty much it for today. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever I do upload a video. I want to say thanks for watching up this point. You guys have a good day. And don't forget, an apple a day keeps the doctor away.